What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We're back at Insurance Auto Auctions here in Oklahoma City for another walk around. Let's jump into this video today and see what we find. Well, this is not typically what I would expect to find out here, but I mean, I guess hearse limousines get in accidents too. Yeah, uh, boy, rarely, rarely will you see something like this out here. This is from Federal. They do a ton of the manufacturing for uh, for these limousines slash hearses. This one is, uh, this one's done. I mean, unfortunately, this is, this is over with, man. Uh, there's absolutely frame damage to this. Uh, golly, this thing is, it's absolutely massive. I don't think the video is gonna do it justice. Oh, the door doesn't even hardly open. This thing probably doesn't have any miles on it at all. Most of the time when I see hearses out here at the auctions, these things usually have like 20, 30, 40,000 miles on them and they go for nothing. Um, I have heard that uh, hearses are worth a ton of money because funeral homes ob obviously need them, but I'll be honest with you, I've purchased a hearse before and it was a, it was a you know, it was an interesting vehicle, kind of cool, drove around in it for a while and uh, you know, no complaints. But when it came time to sell, it didn't bring anything. <laughs> like it, it did very, very badly. So uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know about them being worth a ton of money. Something like this, probably. This, this is a, this is a real, or it was. This was a really nice hearse. They did this one right. I mean, it's, it's stunning. Absolutely beautiful that door yeah like i said absolutely gonna be frame damage on this one guys um non-runner obviously mileage no clue all the wiring harnesses are just ripped apart the battery is literally crushed and smashed under there so and there's the second battery i guess it's got two makes sense this thing's gonna probably use a ton of uh, a ton of power interesting vehicle though and definitely something kind of unique to see out here at the insurance auction let's move on and see what else we can find you just never know what you're going to find out here guys it's one of the things i love about coming out here used to i would make a list and i would already know exactly what i was going to look at i don't do that anymore some of you have said that you miss when i had a list but when i had the list here's the problem with it guys and this goes for all of the auctions when you make a list the list changes the next day. Like I'll typically make my list the night before, you know, and then I get up and I grab my list and I head out. The problem is, is by the time I head out and drive and get all the way here, they have added vehicles to the sale that I didn't know about. You know, so you end up missing a lot of potential vehicles to purchase because they're not on the list. The list is like constantly updating. So for me, I just said, forget the list. Let's just go out there. We can walk the lot. I'll walk through every single car out here and let's see what we find. And, uh, you know, if we find anything decent, well, maybe it's something we can, uh, maybe it's something we can pick up. But this way, your guess is as good as mine. I don't know what's out here any more than you do. You're walking with me, seeing exactly what I see as I'm walking. So we're doing this together, guys. And I actually really enjoy doing it this way. It's a lot of fun because I, I don't know what's out here. And sometimes I find some things that are just, well, like the hearse. It's just like, wow, if it wasn't so destroyed in the front, I'd absolutely buy it. I would, I'm, I, I would I would buy a hearse. <laughs> I've done it before. Does not bother me one bit. All right, is that the, it is, that Explorer. It makes me so sad seeing that Explorer still here. That old one from like 91 or 92, still sitting here. It's, and so is this one, this art project of someone's. <laughs> Someone actually sent me a link to where this used to belong to. And I think it was like a medical marijuana place, something like that. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't participate in any of that stuff. I don't, I don't have any problem with people that do, by the way. It's not, not my deal. Um, but yeah, this was like a mar medical marijuana place. I got, I got over the whole yeah, I got over that whole thing long, long, long time ago. <laughs> it's just not for me. I got things to do and I can't be, uh, you know, I can't be plastered and get my, my stuff done. So here's another one that Monkey Wrench Mike liked. He absolutely loved 
this truck over here, guys. Um, not really. He kind of made fun of it because of the the graphics on it. This one is this one is rough for sure. This one's <laughs> this one's rough. The clear coat is completely gone. Hell, even the paint is starting to bake off of it as well. There's just something about these old square body trucks, though, man. Uh, actually, I guess the, these aren't actually square body, right? Um, I hear so many people today calling them square bodies, OBS. Um, I don't know what the proper terminology is for it, but I think the square body is the old, old. You know, like, what was it, 82? Something like 83 and, and, and prior, something like that. This, to me, is, I mean, it's more modern than a square body, but I'm sure we've got some experts in the comment section that know a little bit more about these trucks than I do, so definitely drop your comment below and let me know. Personally, I think the paint scheme is cool. Um, this, I thought, was interesting. You, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just, I don't know. And something about this, the pizza face thing seems to be a, a theme with this vehicle. I don't get that either. The interior is, uh, it's nostalgic. For those of you that like old stereo systems and this is gonna, this is for you. Um, it's full of stuff. I mean, it, it, there's even hot dogs in the back, I think. Like, yeah, it's, it, it's, you know, what is this? Ride on. I don't, I don't know. Um, anyway, I'm going to move some of this stuff out of the way. The interior is filthy, but honestly, it's really not that bad. Uh, I think somebody used it for storage. It's only got 150,000 miles on the odometer. Uh, you got some Crocs. There you go. Um, bingo, scratch-offs. Looks like something was eating something down there. There's the sole of somebody's shoe. The insole, I should say. It's There's some cassette tapes, insurance cards. I, it, it's There's these old audio box. Some of you that are as old as me are going to remember that speaker. you got to remember. You could buy those at like AutoZone or Walmart or whatever. You used to be able to buy those speakers and in place of like your... The GMs had weird speakers back in the day. What were they like? Six by eights or something. They were really long shelf speakers and sometimes they were hard to find. And they could be kind of expensive if you could find them. So you just buy yourself some of those audio boxes, man. Slap those in the back, down the road you go. That's that's how you used to do it. That takes me back. That takes me back. Um, I don't even know what year this is. I'm guessing it's like in 89, 90. I don't know. Oh, it's a 92. It's a 92. No joke. It's a non-runner. I'm not surprised. Uh, this is probably one that's been sitting for a long time. It's going to be throttle body injected. 5.7. Great engine. Um, fuel is probably rotten. We've got a date code on the battery here, 6 of 20, so somebody, somebody put a battery in it. I'm guessing they realized pretty quick that you can't park a truck for 20 years and throw a battery in it. It doesn't work that way, man. Fuel system, I can almost guarantee, is going to be trashed in this. This is one of those that, if I bought it, I'd probably never be able to sell it. It's got great tires, too. I mean, really good tires. Let's see if we can find a date code on the tires. That might help us a little bit. 26th week of 2016. <laughs> and the tires look brand new. So, you know, seven-year-old tires. That's a good sign. It's pretty gnarly. Let's see what it, see what it smells like, shall we? You know? You know, I don't know. <laughs> this thing could run. I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious. This thing could actually run. Check the oil real quick. It has some. It's clean oil. Yeah. It's in the safe zone. Obviously, battery's dead as a doornail, but look, it even still has the air compressor. Let's check the transmission fluid. You know I'm serious about this one because I'm checking all the daggum fluids. It's uh, urgh, wow. 
Yeah, that's uh, it's pretty dirty. It's absolutely in need of a service, <laughs> maybe in need of a transmission. I don't know. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna throw a jump on it. I I don't expect that it's gonna run, but I'd at least like to hear that it cranks over. Make sure it sounds like it's got good compression. And I think I'm gonna throw a bit on this. I do. I I don't think this is gonna go for very much. I think this would be a fun one to bring to the channel and try to get running. Well, we got power. Look, even the light under the hood still works, guys. That's <laughs> that's wild, man. Um, and this is the one that has the thermostat attached to the wiper motor with zip ties. I, I have no idea what's going on there. Um, I can only assume that this truck has had proper maintenance its entire life. So here we go. Gasoline. Oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, <laughs> that ain't a bad starter, guys, I don't think. It sounds like it's trying to crank the motor and the motor's froze up. Yeah, I think the motor's froze up on her. Boy, that's a shame. Let's see if those terminals are hot. I guarantee you they are. Well, they're warm. They're not hot. It definitely took a toll on the booster pack. Uh, yeah, that ain't good. I wonder if it's something that could be unstuck, you know? Did it freeze up from sitting? I'd find that kind of unlikely. I don't think it sat long enough for the motor to freeze. I'd almost be willing to bet that it was parked because the motor was froze. You know, the good news is it's an easy motor to change out. There's some little rat's nests and stuff down there you can see. Uh, this is super easy motor to change. Two-wheel drive truck, which makes it even easier. This would not be a big deal to put an engine in. Um, so I guess what I'll do is when I get back to the house, I'll go and look up maybe carparts.com. Try to get an idea of how much an engine's going to cost for this. Hopefully we can find one locally. And depending on the price of the motor and, of course, my time to put a motor in it, uh, and the price of the truck, we might bring it home. Or if the truck goes for too much, we might not. Or if the engine costs too much. I don't know. It's all up in the air right now. But if you'd like to see this truck on the channel, drop a comment below and hit the thumbs up button. Let me know. All right, we're going to continue on our way. I just saw something. I absolutely don't really want this, but I'm willing to take a quick peek at it. Uh, an SLK. Oh, no, no, no. We've seen this before. Some of these, not many, but some of these, see... A long time ago, this is an L O oh, an SLK 350. No, timing chain issues. Just the, the, the 350s in general, I try to avoid. It, regardless of whether it's a an E-Class or... It, no, just I avoid anything with that engine. They're just kind of notoriously problematic. Um, but there are a few of those that I found that had... What were they like? SLK 55s or something? Or SLK 550? Something like that. Where they actually had like an AMG version with a V8 under the hood of those. Most of the time, those are like little four-cylinder compressors. Uh, so if you can find one, it's an AMG model. I, <laughs> jump on that. Absolutely jump on that. If I find one, you can bet I'm going to be jumping on it too. Okay, I see a Jeep over here. Uh, most of the time, you guys don't seem to care for Jeeps all that much. Um, I know you're looking at the Volvo. I'm going to tell you right now, I already looked at this Volvo last week. There's a reason it's still here. This thing is just, it's awful. It's a pedal car. When you start it up, the engine rattles and it's not good. It's not good. So we're not going to look at it because I already showed that car in another video. But this Jeep right here, this actually looks, well, it looks really rough. This is, <laughs> this was obviously a toy road hard, put away wet type situation. I don't mind that though, because that's all I want it for. I'm not looking for a, a Jeep to be my daily driver. You know what I mean? I got a yard full of cars <laughs> for daily drivers. Actually, I don't have a yard full of cars. I totally forgot. Guys, I sold almost everything. <laughs> almost all of my cars are sold now. The Impala uh, that had the hail claim on it, Copart's coming to pick that one up, so that one is gone. I've been paid out for it. Um, the Impala SS sold. The Crown Victoria sold. 
That old brown Mercedes sold, the old one with the hood that came up, the diesel, that one sold. And I sold another one. Uh, I sold the Thunderbird. Um, actually, I, I didn't do well on the Thunderbird, guys. And then there's one more that I sold. I can't remember. I can't remember for the life of me what it was. Now I remember. It's the Ford Taurus SHO. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, both of them. Both Ford Taurus SHOs are sold. So, yeah, like literally, I'm actually running short on cars now. I, I'm going to have to buy some more, guys. I've got a 73 Mustang. I've got a 91 Firebird Formula. I've got the 87 Monte Carlo SS. I've got the 87 Grand National. I've got the 88 Mustang Fox Body LX. I just bought a 93 Mustang GT Convertible. And I think that's I think that's about all I got, guys. Maybe we need to add this Jeep. I totally forgot. I have money now. I sold everything. I got some more money to play with. It's got bald tires. It's got no door. Oh, this. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, manual transmission. That's nice. Uh, windshields busted in multiple places. You think it's got power? Nope. It's got no power. What has this got? A, uh, a 3.8 liter under the hood or the 3.6? Nothing in this Jeep is worth dying for. I agree, including the whole Jeep. Like, absolutely. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see what we're working with under here. This is one of those, somebody's gonna want a fortune for it. You know what I mean? That, that's just the way this always goes, man. It, it, it's. I'm not saying it's not worth something. Obviously, it's it's a Jeep. It's worth something. But, you know, you, you don't know if it's got bad axles. You know, the differential front or rear could be bad. Transmission problems, synchronizers, uh, you, overheating issue. You just don't know. And, and part of that is fun. You know, it's buying something you don't know anything about and taking it out and, and figuring it out. I love it. I'm literally addicted to doing this. But at the same time, you know, you, you gotta figure out. You gotta figure out how much things are worth. You know, in, in reality, yes, this is a cool toy, but I mean, it's missing like everything. Uh, it's great as a toy, and that's it. So, how much would you be willing to pay for this toy? And it's listed as it's from a dealership. It's actually been out here before, and it was sent back. <laughs> that tells me everything I need to know. We're not even going to mess with this. So there's a sticker behind the sticker. And the sticker behind the sticker has a totally different seller's name than the sticker on the front. And the sticker on the front is from a, a truck place. You know, uh, they specialize in trucks. And they bought it, obviously, from here. They didn't even take the sticker off. They sent it right back to auction. So here's a little bit of information for you guys okay i'm going to give you guys a little bit of insight here if you ever see that that's for me i uh, just walk away walk away you know somebody literally didn't even take the old sticker off they're like nah send that sucker right back to auction and it's a dealership that specializes in trucks nope <laughs> nope i was actually kind of interested in that too but we'll move on and see if we can find anything else on the other row we've got a hummer we're going to take a look at that I've seen a couple Hummers out here. I keep thinking I'm going to buy one one day, and I just haven't gotten around to it yet. There's that Cadillac. I'm going to tell you guys. I'm going to show you guys something. We'll get to it when we get to the other row. Um, and then this thing that so many of you keep asking me to buy. I can't tell you how many people have emailed me asking me to buy this. Ugh, I, I can't do it, man. I'm sorry, guys. I cannot do it. There's the GMC Safari. We looked at that one. Here's a nice little convertible Mercedes. Light front end damage, nothing too crazy. I'm ready to get to the other row because I saw a couple things over there I'd really like to share with you guys. So I'm kind of I'm kind of walking fast trying to get through this aisle. And and these rows are so long, man. I'm definitely going to get my exercise today. Today I'm actually walking twice as much as I normally walk because of how sparse the vehicles are. I don't want to miss anything. So normally, I just walk down the middle of the aisle, I look side to side, and if I find something, I find something. But because of how limited we are on cars this week, I'm actually walking down each and every aisle, one at a time. And I'm really trying to hunt for cars this week. 
I gotta, I gotta look at this van real quick, guys, and then we'll move on. There's an XK8 over there. I think the next row could be, the next row might be a winner, guys. Oh, a Porsche? Yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. I think we're we're getting into some good stuff. This looks like an old church van. No run, no drive. O2 Dodge Ram wagon. It needs a door. Thankfully, it looks like the damage is limited to the door. Oh, no, it's not. It's got damage in the rear quarter, too. Uh, that's all right. We'll skip that. Let's, man, and see on this row, normally I just walk from one side to the other, just kind of glancing back and forth, but I'm not doing that. Uh, not this week. I'm actually walking down every, ooh. Yeah. No. Okay, anyway, back to this side of the aisle. Uh, Jaguar XK8. Unfortunately, it's not the oh, it's not the R. Golly, this thing's. She's seen better days, guys. You know, I know for a lot of people they're going to look at this car. That, number one, the XK8 was just notoriously bad. I mean, it wasn't, but it was. These cars were known for timing chain issues. Now, if you get it taken care of before it destroys the engine. Great. You've got a great car, probably lasts you a long time. You can't say that about a whole lot of Jaguars. But unfortunately, these uh, I don't know. I don't know. This one looks like it's been sitting in the sun for about 20 years. It's going to need a front bumper. Front bumper is totally destroyed. It's got Bondo. Somebody put Bondo over a plastic bumper. I didn't even know you could do that, guys. That's, that's all Bondo flaking off of a plastic bumper. I had no idea that Bondo would stick to plastic. Well, apparently it doesn't because it's all coming apart. You got a busted headlight right here. That's been busted for, I mean, look at it. Long time, long time. Non-runner, only 83,000 miles. See, it needs, obviously, tires. Tires are flat. Uh, it needs a complete repaint. The convertible top looks to be in decent shape, though. I mean, that's surprising. The top actually looks really, really good. Covered in spider webs, but it looks good. Let's see what the interior looks like. You're talking about a complete respray. It doesn't run. Probably got fuel system issues. The interior is just trashed on this, too. Yeah, this is unfortunate. Unfortunate. Take a look at that seat. It's just, it's ripped apart. Seats are filthy. Looks like some someone very dirty was in this one, guys. Yeah, okay. I was excited for it. Um, I don't even need to pop the hood. I don't need to hear it try to crank. This, this one's, it's too much. It's too much. Obviously, uh, fuel system problems from sitting along with literally everything else wrong with it. So we'll move on. Here's a nice little beater. Pedal car. It's a run and drive. What year is it? A 2002 Corolla. Heck, that's not too bad, guys. I'm always down for a beater car. Let's take a, let's take a quick look at this one. This was not what I was excited about, though. Not at all. It's got decent tires. It's a Toyota Corolla S. I don't know what that means. Uh, it's super fast, would be my guess. Let's take a look at the interior. It's probably got 350,000 miles on it because these cars run forever. Like, forever. And half the time, the batteries are still up on them, too, which is something that never happens out here. You know, it's, it's going to be a little rough, but it's an automatic. That's unfortunate. I would love to have it in a manual, but automatic, it probably still runs and drives, guys. The interior is really not that bad. I mean, it's, it's surprisingly, it's not that bad. What's the mileage on this thing? Oh, it's digital. You get the red gauges, guys. No kidding. You get some red gauges. Look at those. Suckers look pretty slick. <laughs> All right. I'm game. I just, I got to know. I got to know how many miles are on it. Oh, it says on it right there. I missed it. 182,000. That's nothing. Listen to me. I have literally seen these with three, 400,000 miles on the odometer with an automatic transmission and they still run and drive. I, I can't explain it. I don't know how they did it, but damn Toyota, you guys knocked it out of the park with these cars, man. The battery is from 2019. So, you know, four or five years old. Let's check the oil. It's got oil, not a lot. It's got oil, probably burning it, I would imagine. It's another thing about Toyotas. They're kind of notorious for burning oil, all of them. 
I, I don't know that there's any Toyota that was not known for burning oil. You just had to keep oil in them. Keep oil in them. Make sure you change your spark plugs periodically. These things run forever. Let me throw a jump on it, guys. Let's hear this thing run because this one, this one I would probably bid on. I have no use for it, but I'd probably bid on it anyway. All right, you ready to see what it does? I bet, I bet it fires right up. I'll bet there's no hesitation. It just fires right up. Miles accurately represented 182,364. I told you. <laughs> I told you. No hesitation. Should fire right up. Not a problem. Got a bit of an exhaust leak, probably from the flex pipe. Other than the exhaust leak, it sounds fine. It's out of gas. Look, you even have a CD player. Look at the climate control and the stereo with a tape deck. You've got options in this car, guys. Yeah. Get it. Air conditioning. Well, I heard the engine bog down, so the AC is going to work too, guys. You, <laughs> you, you, you'd be hard-pressed to go wrong buying this car. Uh, yeah, the AC is cold. <laughs> Unbelievable. Steering feels good. Does it have gears? It does. Yeah. E-brake off. Forward. It stops. Backwards. It stops. It has good brakes. Just a super loud exhaust. Important window works. Less important window works. This is unreal. And that air conditioning is too cold. I got to turn it off. <laughs> AC works great. Oh man. Uh, guarantee you it's leaking at the flex pipe back here. Almost guarantee it. Yeah, it's not the header. It's not the header. Alternator's charging at 15 volts, so we can shut this off. Don't need it. a few dings here and there but I mean overall this isn't bad guys look at how smooth it's running you can balance a nickel on the engine of this car wow that's depending on what it goes for this could be a steal of a deal out here guys I like these Toyota rims in fact for a minute I thought they were aftermarket um, looks like it's got one mismatch though. Take a look at that. Tires look like, I thought they were good. They got pretty good tread. Looks like there's a lot of shoulder wear and there's a lot of dry rotting that I didn't see. Uh, well, I just got a notification from Copart saying that uh, something happened with my electric Fiat, so I need to check that out. There's the other wheel right there and a spare tire to go with it. No joke. They even give you a spare tire uh, Window tints bad who cares man. You want to talk about a great little Econo box. This is it right here Dead as doornail. I like this one guys. I like this one. We're gonna put this on the list All right, I put that one up on the list. Let's continue on because like I said, there's a There's a couple of them over here. One of them. I kind of wanted y'all's advice on it's the uh, Cadillac Escalade Platinum that we looked at last week. I won the auction, but they didn't want to sell it to me, so they've got this reserve set on it. And I feel like it's probably worth it, but I also feel like I'm probably going to lose money on this deal if I buy it. There's also a Hummer over here. I don't think I have time to look at both of them in this. No, a cop car, another Crown Vic. Man, I just sold the one I've got. But it's not painted black and white. I kind of like this one better. It even comes with the right wheels already. Why? I, I didn't come here to look at this. I didn't know this was here. And now I have to look at it. I have to. I, I have to. This thing has been parked for a long time. I just did this. I just went through this with my other one. At least now I know how to change the fuel pump. The tires are completely rotted. Take a look at this. Look at these tires. 
I mean, they're they're literally blown apart. <laughs> the, yeah, the front tire, this thing's been sitting in the same spot so long. Look at that. Look at all the mud. And the tire is not even round anymore. <laughs> it's... Oh man, I just, I got a, I got a soft spot for these silly old cars, man. Um, let's, let's just take a look. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt. Oh wow, yeah. It's got the work floor. It's got a HP printer and it's like a booster seat and the leather seats in the back, cloth up front, or pleather, I should say. Oh yeah. Did this ding? Okay, no way. I was going to say, no way, man. There's no way this car has power unless somebody just threw a, a battery in it. Yeah, she's dead as a doornail. Well, let's pop the hood. I'm a sucker for a Panther. You know what? We're going to have to get to that Cadillac Escalade. Same deal with the hood. These things all stick. You just got to... There you go. See? Just gotta uh, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle with it. Oh, wow. Holy crap. Yeah, that ain't, that ain't good. <laughs> that ain't good. No joke. Oh man, some rats were in here. They ate up this wiring harness. Yeah. Who knows what all that goes to. So this isn't something I'd want to throw a jump on with a bunch of... You'd have to clean it up first, you know. We'd have to really get in here, clean it up, and uh, figure out all the wiring. You don't want to put a hot battery on a bunch of chewed up rat wires. Certainly not. <sighs> yeah, I don't... I, I don't know. <laughs> this one's pretty rough. Let's check the gas cap. We can... Take a peek in there real quick. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of crap in there. Let's sniff it. Yeah, rotten, absolutely rotten. I just did this, literally just did this. And even though I think the, the color scheme, the black and white is super cool on this, I, I'm gonna walk away from this one, guys. Sadly, I hate to do it, but I don't, I don't need another one. So we are gonna be able to get to the Cadillac. This will be our this will be our last one because I really wanted y'all's opinion on this, and I am just I'm kind of torn on this one, guys. What year is this? We looked at this I don't know a week or two ago, and I did win it. They didn't sell it to me. You know, this is a 2004 Cadillac Escalade ESV. All right, so it's the extended wheel be extended wheelbase, and it's a platinum, but it is wrecked. All right, it's wrecked. It's got good tires. It's got the really nice, what are these, 20s? Yeah, 20 inch wheels with really nice Nexen Rodian tires. I mean, it's a good looking truck. The only damage is the front. And it's really not that bad. If I remember right, the hood got hit. The fender obviously took the worst of the damage. So you need a headlight, you need a fender, you need a front bumper cover, and again, the hood, you know, it's got a tiny dent right here. Could that be fixed? Maybe, uh, maybe not. I, I, I don't know. It runs great. The, the doors open and close like they're supposed to. It's missing one center cap. That's probably like $500. I don't know. It, people want too much money for the center caps on these. But what I'm trying to say is overall, it's a pretty nice vehicle. The interior is in pretty good shape for one of these. The interiors on these are usually shot. You can see the, the seat here has minimal damage. It's really not that bad. And they put a seat cover over it, which I'd take off, you know, whatever. It's got the sunroof. It's got DVD players in the back that work. I mean, it looks like somebody, somebody actually really took care of it. They tried to anyway. Um, it's got the third row seats. Sometimes those are missing, so it's nice to see those in there. Um, and a DVD screen in the back too. It's the far back for the third row, second row. It's got front and rear heat and air. I mean, it's platinum. It's got everything. It's it's got everything. It comes with remotes, all of that. It needs minimal work. Like honest to God, you could get in this and drive this. You could, if you wanted to, you could drive this home. There is nothing stopping you. It runs perfect. Air conditioning works and everything. So I want it for I don't know, fourteen hundred bucks, fifteen hundred dollars, and at that price, I was like, steal, bet all day because it's probably not gonna cost me more than 600 bucks for the bumper, the headlight, and the fender. And the hood is something I'll 
think about. You know, I'll think about. But the hood, maybe another $150 for the hood. Um, after fees and everything on $1,500, what are you talking about? Like $2,200 maybe? $2,200 is, is probably about what it would come out to. Well, they have they countered me at $2,000, and I just... I couldn't do it, man. I, I don't know, because I'm thinking after fees on $2,000, now we're talking about, like, probably $2,700, $2,800. And then plus, you know, at least another $700 for the for the parts so now we're over three thousand dollars easy um yeah that, that like 35 maybe around thirty five hundred dollars i i just i don't know guys what's the mileage on this one i don't even remember 180 it's got 180 now i know that these things will go half a million miles i've seen it done but I'm just thinking like 3,500 and it's, I haven't checked, but I'm willing to bet it's a salvage title that I have to rebuild. Uh, 3,500, I'm kind of wondering if I couldn't just buy one that's already decent for that kind of money. You guys comment below, tell me what you think. Truthfully, I'm really torn on whether to just go ahead and accept the reserve or let it go. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna get out of here. I wanna thank each and every one of you for taking the time to watch my videos. If you enjoy them, hit the thumbs up button and let me know. Be sure to drop your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed so you don't miss out on any new videos. Till next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.